Hey, hey, it is Zenio Gamer, and today we're going to be talking about Vigor the 2A Werewolf. Now, Vigor has become very meta in recent months, both in Special League and in four-star Siege bases. He's also really good on Guild War and Siege offense. So before we talk about runes, which by the way, my runes are very bad on Vigor, <laughs> um, and, and we'll talk about why, but before we talk about runes, let's talk about what makes him such a great monster, because he is legitimately one of the best 2A monsters. So to start off with, he does have a Guild War leader skill. It's 21% attack, so it's not particularly relevant. You're very rarely going to use it. But what makes him really special is with that 115 base speed, his skill to the Predator's Cry. Now this skill is going to give an AoE attack speed buff to all allies, which means that if he acts first, a lot of times he can boost your allies in front of the enemies. It also heals each ally by 20% each, obviously doesn't benefit you on first turn, but does matter as the fight goes on. And then it's also going to reduce your allies' chances of being critical hit by 50%. Now his skill one just has a heal block on it, but the damage does scale to his own maximum HP. And his skill three has a three turn, huge three turn defense break, making him as far as I can think of the only three star monster, granted a 2A, but still the only three star monster that can provide a three turn defense break. That's one of the reasons why he is so meta in special league in the four star special league right now. Now, in addition, this uh, this skill three, the shred, is going to do damage scaling to his max HP, and the damage is legitimately pretty good. So you can see we've got him loaded here in the optimizer. Now his skill one does 215% of attack plus 16% of HP, and keep in mind he's got 12,500 base HP, so that's huge scaling damage. But even bigger is his skill three. Now I know the multipliers look lower, but remember this is a three turn hit, so it's 160% of attack plus 12% of HP, which is actually a massive damage dealing hit for an HP type or a bruiser type monster. And then you throw in the fact that he can add a defense break on that first hit if he's got some accuracy and those next two hits are gonna scale even harder. He can one shot, legitimately one shot monsters despite being a bruiser who also offers heal and speed buff. Now before we move to, to runes, I think the last thing we should talk about with all two A's I'll be talking about this is whether or not it makes sense to Devilmon him or to skill him up through fusions. So with a nat 5, most nat 5s really can't be used or can't be used as effectively if you don't skill them up. And then most nat 4s you don't really want to waste devils on so you get their skill ups either through fusions or just over time. But the two A's fall somewhere in between. It's a lot of lost opportunities to go out and rune farm if you fuse them up or it's, you know, in his case it's a, what, 3, 4, 6 devil mons. So 6 devil mons is about half of your average nat 5 or it's going to be... 60 days, two months basically in dimensional hole to full, fully skill him up. So what about Vigor? Now as a bruiser, I probably wouldn't say it's worth skilling him up on the basis of 20% damage on his skill one. And then we look at the skill two, he's adding 4% to his heal. That is actually useful, but once again, it's questionable as, as to whether or not it's worth a Devilmon. And then we get to the skill three. Now the skill three is his big damage dealing skill. He does legitimately really good damage with it and that 10% damage buff could matter. It could be the difference between, for example, killing Garo or triggering the passive. The second skill up in here is 15% to the harmful effect rate. So that means that each of the three hits now has a 60% chance to defense break. But more important, it means the first hit has a 60% chance to defense break, which is what stacks that huge damage on the second and third hits. And then the last one is a kicker, it reduces his cool time. So for the skill three alone, each of these three things is totally worth a devil, which means that I absolutely would devil my vigor. So if you were to max out skill three completely, should you stop? I personally probably would, uh, but if you're using him in special league, or even if you're using him in RTA, every little edge counts. So if you're using him consistently in Special League, it may be worth, I mean, we're only talking three more devils at that point. So it may be worth the last three devils for the skills one and two, or at a minimum, just keep going until you get the skill two for the extra heal. Okay, so how do you rune Vigor? Well, as I've mentioned a couple of times, my runes, not very good. Uh, the ideal runes for Vigor, especially if you're using him on uh, Siege Defense, are going to just be Violent Will. And if you can't get Violent Will, then pretty much Violent Anything is going to be fine. I mean, because his skill 1 is just doing a heal block, 
Uh, it's not really essential that you add in like Revenge Rune, so you could go with something like Violent Blade or even Violent Energy or Guard because he is a very stat-hungry monster. And if, if you can't get those Will Runes on, then you could just use one of the sets that are going to boost his stats. Uh, Violent Shield would also be helpful, depending on which types of comps you're using him with. Now, for offense purposes, I do like him in the Shield Will Revenge, which is how I have him set up. I bring him in against a lot of Orion-type comps. Also because, as I said, he is stat-hungry, so he's going to take one of your better violent sets, which I just didn't have to spare at the moment. Generally speaking, you're going to want to make him pretty fast. He's got 115 base speed, which is really, really, really nice. And that does mean you're probably going to be using a speed rune on slot 2. And then you're most likely going to want to go with crit damage and HP. But if you can't get him enough HP or enough crit rate through subs, then you could also go speed HP HP. So we're going to jump back over to the optimizer for a minute and we're going to take a look at what the actual, what difference there is actually between using like a crit damage rune with lower crit rate and HP versus using a, an HP rune slot four. So let's just for argument's sake, I'm in that crit damage build right now. So actually let's just use my exact build right now. Now, if we wanted to consider it as three hits, we could just change this up to 430 and 36%. And what we're gonna see is that the average damage that I'm doing on my skill three right now is 21,564. Now, if we were to change out that slot four crit damage rune into let's say an HP rune with um, attack speed, crit rate, and crit damage subs, everything else is the same. So let's toggle back over, take a quick look at my rune right now. So we can see I've got 16, 17, 21, and 6. So let's just basically change out that 17 HP to be 17 crit damage. We'll leave everything else the same in the stats. Okay, so since I have 17 HP now, uh, what it comes out to is we're adding in 5875, 5875, which brings us to 40,890 HP. Now we said we turn that... Um, that HP into crit damage. So we're going to call it 95 crit damage. And then again, we're just going to leave everything else the same. So we're going to pretend that we have an HP rune with the same attack and crit rate and speed subs. And all we did was just kind of reverse the crit damage and HP. So previously I was at 21,564. Now I hit calculate and look, I'm at 19,484. So the lost crit damage was largely offset by the fact that I added in HP on an HP scaling rune. And so it is not essential that you wind up having uh, crit damage slot four. If that's what you need to build your Vigor tankier, then you definitely can go speed HP HP. And you know, we're losing what, about 10% damage, but in exchange for that 10% damage, I gained almost 20% HP, which makes me that much tankier. Also means that heal that I'm doing now heals myself for 8,000 instead of 7,000. So again, Violent Will is what we're looking for. Violent anything in the offset if you can't do Will. And then if you can't do Violent, I would recommend going with a Shield Will Revenge or a Shield Will and any offset. Uh, the Revenge, again, isn't really that important with him. Now, in terms of stats, I would shoot for at least 40,000 HP. If you could do a 50,000 HP build, that would be amazing. But I wouldn't give up too much speed to get to that 50k. Uh, I would probably want him to be at least 220, at least 230 speed in G2, G3 ranks of Guild and Siege content. So keep in mind the stats I'm recommending are like your long-term targets. Obviously, if you're in G1 or if you're in a Conqueror Guild, um, then the stat ranges you're looking at are going to be different and just kind of adjust it accordingly to your other monsters. So look at Vigor as kind of like um, a Skogel. He's easier to get that many HP on, but he needs more stats. So whatever HP you're targeting on your Skogel, that's probably about what you want to be targeting on your Vigor. You want to make sure you've got some defense because Vigor is usually going to be targeted early in the fight. So having all that HP doesn't benefit you as much if you don't have some defense. I'd shoot for about a thousand total. Uh, you do want to make sure you have some attack because, again, his skill 3 is a big hitting attack. Um, and then that leads us to the fact that you definitely want to have some accuracy. Definitely more than I've got here. I would shoot, because he is a triple hitter, usually on a multi-hitter, I shoot for like 20-25 accuracy, especially a stat-hungry one like this. But because it is so important that he gets that defense break on the first hit in order to make sure his damage scales, I would probably shoot for 25 to 35 accuracy on Vigor if you can do it. But I would prioritize, and I'll put this up on screen right now, I would prioritize my stats 
as HP being the most important, followed by speed, followed by crit rate, followed by defense, followed by accuracy, followed by crit damage. I know there's a meme in there for those of you who have seen the Ace Roast. Um, I know there's a meme in there, but we did look at it on the emulator and because he scales to HP, the damage is there. So with that said, uh, that's how I'd ruin him. Now let's take a look at how I would actually use him. Okay, so for Siege Defense, Vigor has become one of the most uh, used and one of the strongest uh, defense monsters on a four-star Siege base. You'll see him very commonly in Skogel, Iliana, Vigor in G2, G3 Siege, and you may also see it as Kamun, Iris, and Vigor. Now, obviously, both of these can be countered, so we're not going to go in and fight the Vigors directly, but I did want to point out these are two of the most common meta defenses using him. Uh, the third one, it's not quite as good, but if you don't have an Iliana or an Iris because they're both LD4s, then you may see something like Skogel, Olivia, Vigor. Doesn't work quite as well in the G2, G3 Siege ranks, but in Lower Guardian, it's probably still a really difficult defense to deal with, especially if it's well ruined. Now, one of the primary uses for Vigor on offense is going to be to counter Garros, but remember that he's also going to serve as your primary tank. He's a healer, he reduces the crit that the entire team takes, and then he can take a beating. He's a bruiser. So if we look at one of the more meta defenses, we could counter that by using double wind plus vigor. So what's going to happen here is that the Garo will attack one of the wind monsters randomly, but the Susano and the Orion will both go after the vigor. Now my vigor is in shield will. Again, the recommended build is violent will, but you could get those shield runes from another monster. So in this case, the, the Ayuno is also in shield will revenge. Uh, the Orochi is only in shield, so we just have to hope the Garo doesn't defense break him uh, in order to run this test. We wanted to look at this uh, fight using nukers, not bruisers, so there you go. The Garo comes into the Orochi, and the Garo is the only one that's actually going to hit my wind monsters. Now, my Vigor being first, I have two options here. I can actually give myself the crit reduction, I can heal up the Orochi, and I can take the speed buff, or I could go in and just work on that Garo. So for right now, we're going to take the heal and the crit reduction. We're going to go ahead and I think just try for the defense break on the Susano. We didn't get it because he has that uh, passive. So we'll go ahead and continue to work on the Susano, although he's max resist. So yeah, that may not have been the best choice, but that worked out. Uh, we got the violent proc, so there you go. Susano's gone. And uh, now we are almost certainly going to lose our Orochi here. But in the meantime, let's we'll slow it down to one speed. Let's see how much damage we can do on this Garo, who still has shield. And keeping in mind, I only have six accuracy. So did we get, we did not get any defense breaks because of that six accuracy. I think I might need to redo this test. Now we're gonna go ahead and start on this Garo. And if you saw, we did 9,000 on that last hit. As soon as we landed the defense break, um, we were able to hit the Garo for 9,000. And now we can just pretty much keep the Garo low with our heal block. So we'll, oh, didn't get the heal block. But again, this is why you need accuracy on your Vigor. This is why my build is so bad. So we'll go ahead and take our crit resist here again. Uh, the crit resist is also helping to um, reduce the amount of healing that the uh, Garo would get. Okay, so we did land the heal block that time. And now we can actually go ahead with our triple hit and finish off the Garo. Okay, let's take a look at another meta defense, Ajir, Skogel, and Triana. So in this case, I'm bringing in Double Wind, which means the Ajir is going to target my Vigor. The Ajir is the primary damage dealer, other than obviously Skogel's damage, which is going to be Splash. Now the Triana is going to protect me from my Yen dying in this case, and then I've got double healers around my Yen. The Vigor is going to give me a defense break on that Ajir, so we're going to be able to get rid of the Vigor, uh, get rid of the Ajir pretty quickly. Now, since there were Will Runes, I just boosted myself up. With the uh, with the Yen, we're going to save the skill too until we're able to get that defense break out. Go ahead and see if we can just reduce the attack bar a little more. And of course, he's still got Will up, so uh, we are well. He's he he is me. He is me. Um, but yeah, so we'll go ahead and just hit the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Ajir right there. Uh, now we'll go ahead once again and once again. Okay, we may not actually need defense break at this point. <laughs> so let's see if we can uh, just finish it with the Vigor. <laughs> not quite. 
All right, this will actually kill right through the Triana passive. This is a yen showcase. That's all we're doing here. It's a yen showcase. Let's see. Okay, but see now Vigor just kicked in. He gave us our crit resistance, which is really going to help against Triana. Also gave me that healing and speed buff. Keep in mind too that I used yen because she does speed scaling damage. And uh, hopefully we're going to be able to get ourselves healed back up before that Skogel gets another rock up in the air. And if Yen keeps proccing like this, we definitely will. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, there we go. We got the revenge. Vigor needed to be involved in his own video. Um, but okay, so joking aside, you guys can see, though, how this team does work. Because even though Vigor didn't wind up being needed to kill the Ajir, uh, the speed buff definitely boosted the damage for Yen. The healing actually helped me get back in time to... Um, to sustain, sustain that second rock. And overall, he provided some really important sustain. So that's it for today's video, guys. Overall, Vigor is probably at least an S tier to a monster. Maybe not an S tier monster overall, but if you're looking at it in the context of two, uh, four stars and two A's, he's at least S tier, possibly SS, somewhere in there. Uh, extremely powerful monster in Special League, extremely powerful monster on Siege and Guild War defense, and also pretty good on Siege and Guild War offense. So as always, guys, hope you enjoyed the video, hope you found it useful, and we'll see you next time. Hey guys, if you're still with me to this point, then that means that you probably liked the video, found it entertaining, or even better, both. So please smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, and leave a comment down below because those things help the channel grow, and more importantly, they show me that the video is useful, and that's the whole reason I do this in the first place.